Yeah, you can see here our finished product. It's been outside for a while now. I unfortunately don't have any floor space in the shop to dedicate to storing it. 
but I'd like to just quick run through the design and how things are functioning. So the last part of the video you could see I added this back brace. The reason I added that was because all of these four supports are in a line and I figure if I'm putting any great deal of leverage on it that would possibly have the tendency to twist. So that's the reason I added that single back support. I used all heavy iron on the base to kind of offset the amount of heavy iron that's up on the top. The legs are wide enough to really provide a lot of stability. It doesn't have a tendency to rock or tip. So far, fingers crossed. I figured if it ever did, I could go ahead and fill this bottom part with concrete, maybe build some type of pan and put concrete in the base. Fortunately, I haven't needed to. You can see here on the brackets on each end that I've stacked up material. I've got a piece of half inch, a piece of five eighths, and this big piece of one inch material all stacked. The reason for that is I wanted to leave enough room in here where I could possibly add a spring in the future. I still intend on doing that. For now, all I'm using is a pry bar to get this lifted up to where I can slide my material in. Total width from usable end to usable end on this is five feet. The reason I went with five feet is because all of my scrap material was long enough to allow that and you can buy sheet metal, at least here in my area, in 5 by 10 sheets. This piece, top piece of the brake, is actually a cutting edge for a bucket, like for a bobcat bucket or a backhoe bucket. It does have a very small flat lip here. The rest is cut. The reason I went with this is I fully intended originally to spend a couple hours with the grinder and take this down to a full point to where I can make bends beyond 90 degrees. I haven't had the need yet. It's still an option. I've also added this in a matching size to the end nuts, which can apply downward force in the center of this, should there ever be any type of deflection that is adjustable. Now, another thing you saw me add in that video was these plates here with the holes in them, offset holes from each other. I originally intended these to have a square nut behind them with a, a bolt here through the front and that's the reason they're offset. This piece of angle iron that you saw me weld in in the middle is only welded on the ends. It's floating through the center here and the idea was that you could tighten these bolts and put tension on the bending part of this brake, on the pivoting part, in case there was ever any tendency to deflect in the center. That would kind of help, help offset that. And that's also the reason why these are floating. They aren't incorporated into that center piece. They float around it so that this could bend out and apply pressure to the top piece. This is a big piece of angle iron, heavy quarter inch wall angle iron, and it matched up perfectly to the I-beam that I'm using as the base for this brake. That gave me a nice long platform here on the back. And then I took these angle pieces and welded them out to my hinges to help support and incorporate those into the body. And then I also added the third hinge here and added a little corner gusset. Two probably would have been sufficient. I just threw that extra one on there for good measure. And the pins right now, there's nothing that's retaining them. They haven't had the tendency to walk out. I did intend to make some type of retention system on there, whether it be just a set screw or something like that. I haven't needed to. I've just been using a regular 30 weight oil in these hinges. And I've just been using a regular box in wrench for all the adjustments on this. Fits this nicely and it works really well on these. Made in America. And as I mentioned, this was all built from reclaimed scrap, minus the cutting edge, which I did get new. Everything else is scrap, and the really cool part is everything ended up being quarter inch wall or greater. As far as capacity, I haven't really had the opportunity for this thing to really work hard and stretch its legs. You saw me bend the three pieces of six inch by eighth inch flat bar. I bent all three of them at the same time. I only had to bend them to 14 degrees, which isn't really much, but the brake handled it no problem. Your views are always appreciated, and if you like what you saw, leave a quick thumbs up. If you subscribe, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.